busting, destroying, annihilating Appalachian Trail through hiking myths. There have been more people that have died from constipation than have died from black bear attacks in the last 100 years. I don't know where the hell this one came from. This is super stupid. Pennsylvania is rocky. I think this is BS. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Trail Tales. My name is Kyle O'Grady. I'm a through hiker. I'm a peak bagger. I am a huge hiking nerd. And every single week on this podcast, I chat with other hiking nerds about their experiences on the trail. This is a big episode, folks. First of all, because it's an awesome theme with an awesome guest, Appalachian Trail Myths. We're just busting them. We're breaking them. We're annihilating them, as I said in the episode. And Luke McKay is our guest. Luke is an Appalachian Trail through hiker, and he is also an editor for my YouTube channel and basically a co-producer at this point. So that's the, those are the first reasons, actually, why this is such a big episode. The second reason is because, well... If you're watching on YouTube right now, you know this already. This is the very first video podcast in Trail Tales history. That's right. I just said it there. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see my face right now. You know what color my shirt is. You know what color my, my eyes are. You can see my pimples. It, you, you can see it all. But if you're not watching on YouTube, you can't see any of it. You're really missing out. And so if you're not subscribed on the Trail Tales YouTube channel, dude, what are you doing go subscribe. It's in the show notes. It's at Trail Tales Pod if you type that in. Anyways, if you're not going to subscribe to the YouTube, at least leave a five-star review and help me get more five-star reviews than Backpacker Radio, which is a goal of mine, which is not because I don't like them, by the way. I actually really admire the show, and I may or may not be a guest on that show soon, but uh, I just want to get more five-star reviews than them. Let's get into it. Episode number 155, Appalachian Trail Myths Busted with Luke McKay. Lucas McKay, the one and only. Welcome to welcome back to Trail Tales, actually, I should say. Yes, welcome back. Well, you I mean, should we tell them about the big mistake that happened? About how I we were supposed to have a video podcast before and I fucked it up. Big time. Uh yeah, no, I definitely messed it up. So I said in the intro that this was like the first ever video episode of Trail Tales, but the truth is we've actually Luke and I have recorded a couple of video episodes in the past together and we put them up on for Patreon only. But um one of them, yeah, I uh not only did I delete the video for the episode, but I deleted the audio for the episode. And so we recorded an entire Trail Tales episode in person together, talking about the Washita Trail, and I deleted it. I fucked it was up. a great episode. Like it was, it was. I had, yeah, it was in the trailer. The lighting was good. Freaking the beers was good. Nice freaking bush light. Probably we were probably pretty drunk. Probably I don't. Remember. You know, let's not talk about it. Let's <laughs> talk about. Let's talk about freaking the AT dude and some myths. They all saw the title. They know what's going on. In this episode, we're gonna be busting, destroying, freaking annihilating Appalachian Trail through hiking myths. That's what we're going to do. And um, some of the stuff is has been talked about on the show before. Some of it's original. And I don't know, dude. We're just going to have a good time. But before we do that, Luke, why don't you just give everybody a reminder about who you are, what you've hiked, and uh, your little your little bio, if you will, the kind of thing you'd put in your uh, Tinder bio. Well, I'm 5'10", which doesn't look super great on a Tinder bio, but maybe <laughs> maybe 3,000 miles of hiking does to the right person. I don't really yeah, that's know. That's not but, bad. You know, well, anyway, so yeah, I've hiked the, the Appalachian Trail. I did that in 2021, and then right after that, I threw like the Pinhoti and then like connected it via the JMT to Springer. Uh, and then I've done the Washita with Kyle and, uh, you know, some random things here and there. And so that's, you know, probably around 300, three, not 300, 3,000 miles. Um, I got a YouTube channel. I've uh, edited for Kyle sometimes. I edited his PCT series. You've probably seen me on like an episode of that and then maybe on his Washita hike that we did together. So yeah, and I've edited some content for him since then, and and uh, we have a good time working together. He also, to be clear, edited the uh, most recent PCT video where you know when I went back and f tried to hike it and it failed, but we made this cool documentary. Uh, and he edited and not just edited it, but look, you you pretty much co-produced it too. Like a lot of the um, the flow and the storytelling aspect was 
you know, greatly enhanced because of your work. So it wasn't like you just slapped some clips together. So he also he edited and basically co-produced that as well. And he did a great job. So so great job, Luke. I think I haven't I don't think I've paid you for that yet, have I? Or I, I don't mean, think I've ever paid you for anything. I mean, I? I'll have to check check you old records, you know. But dude, <laughs> I loved making that video. It was such a good time. And and I, and Kyle and I really want to and talk often about like making like higher echelon forms of videos with like just higher yep. levels of storytelling um and just telling cool stories that like we are both like are passionate about and just have fun with because we both love doing this like walking thing which is super weird but and a lot of other people like doing it too and i and we both think that there's like a lot of opportunity to tell stories in ways that like they haven't been told before um and as far as like through hiking goes and that sort of thing because you know we've we've seen all a lot of the same kind of stuff we've seen the like daily uploads or weekly uploads and that kind of thing but we haven't and we've seen like documentaries but i think that i think there's a there's a fresher way to do it and and Kyle and I both really so that was kind of our first crack at that and and it was super fun and we learned a lot and it you know it was good in a lot of ways and is bad in other ways. And, you know, we've, we'll, uh, we'll do better on the next one, you know, but it was super fun. And, uh, yeah, I look forward to, to telling more, more big stories like that, you know, like maybe possibly actually finishing it one day and hiking, you know, when it's, when there's not, when it's <laughs> not, I, wouldn't, so I wouldn't go that far. I wouldn't go that I mean, far. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, no, yeah, we'll see. Super like making that stuff. And the talking head videos, you know, uh, the camp chair video was fun. If anybody watched that. Yeah, good time. He's done a lot of stuff. Um, but we're not here to talk about that anymore no. today. We're going to do some Appalachian Trail myths. We're going to bust them. We're going to break them. We're going to annihilate these mother effing, as Luke would say, because um, he doesn't like to swear because he's a good boy. These mother effing Appalachian Trail myths. Yes, that is him. So, are you ready to annihilate some myths about through hiking the AT, Luke? Let's freaking nuke them, my man. Let's take them Let's out. nuke them. Let's do it. That's a good one. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to start. So, the first myth that we're going to annihilate, we're going to nuke, is that Pennsylvania is rocky. I think this is BS, and Dude. let me let me explain it, and Luke, we'll get your thoughts. Yeah. Um, so, you hear... This is honestly one of the biggest things that you hear people say before you through hike the AT. It's like, Pennsylvania is so rocky. You're going to trip on every rock. There's snakes and every, like, it's so rocky. It's so rocky. And listen, and again, this has been talked about on the show before, but I just wanted to get this out here. It is true that Pennsylvania is rocky. I'm not saying there's no rocks in Pennsylvania. I'm not saying it's just a cakewalk, but it's not as bad as everybody says it is, first of all. And second of all, I think the bigger point here is that not all of Pennsylvania is rocky. There's only a portion of Pennsylvania that's rocky. And I didn't think it was that much worse than a couple other spots on the trail. Yeah. So I remember getting to Maryland and like seeing some rocks pick up in Maryland. And I was like, oh shit, we're getting close to Pennsylvania. And then I got to Pennsylvania and it felt like the first half, at least going northbound of Pennsylvania, was not that rocky. And it really wasn't until the end that it picked up. And so I just think it's kind of BS for people to say that all of Pennsylvania is rocky. It's really only a few sections, but that could just be me. What do you, what do you think about this one, Luke? No, I mean, in, in large part, I super agree. I mean, to be honest, during my through the time that I saw the most people leave trail outside of that kind of beginning time where, you know, it's, it's, you know, you know, that's when most people who really aren't going to do it leave, you know, and then you have sprinkles here and there, but I saw the biggest concentration of people leave after Pennsylvania because the whole time they've been hearing, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, Pennsylvania is so rocky. And then they actually get to Pennsylvania, they finish Pennsylvania, and then they get to New Jersey. And it's really not much better, you know, like it's, it's, you've got just constant, like just little, little puds, you know, pointless up, it's ups and downs. And it's got a lot of rocks too. And you just can't like generalize an entire section of trail by saying, hey, the, this entire state is X, Y, or Z because it's, there's so many miles to it. And, you know, you're going to uh, approach different terrain throughout that entire state. The first like third of Pennsylvania is really nice, like 
farmland flattish trail like it's super pretty, pretty. Easy. it's pretty easy like it's it's i would say it's like probably the second like parts of that and now again i'm not generalizing the whole first third of pennsylvania but a good amount of it like you can like it's almost like the end in maine where you're like rolling out the red carpet in the hundred mile wilderness i mean where you've got that whole kind of cakewalk it's it's like that in some spots where it's just nice farmland there's cherry trees everywhere we would pick cherries you know alpha stuff it was a great time but yeah you can't you can't say that the whole state is rocky but yeah towards yeah, the end you are right i mean there are like a couple really gnarly days towards the end but it's like two days or so you know where it's yeah. like the really bad kind of rocks where you know it's like the medium-sized sharp ones that are like embedded in the ground and half of them are sticking out Woof. <laughs> it can be bad it can be bad for sure but it's not it's not the whole, it, I don't know. I think that is so overblown. So I had to include that as myth number one. Yeah. All right. So the next the next myth, this one came from Luke, but he doesn't have his notes in front of him. So I'm actually going to be reading his. Um, this myth about through hiking the Appalachian Trail is that it's overly, it's overtly dangerous. And he put black bears, snakes, spiders, cliffs, etc. The myth is that people constantly say that like, you know, being outside is dangerous or through hiking is dangerous or that it's, more, you know, any more dangerous than... Living your normal everyday life, um, you know, like throwing out things about, oh, did you hear about that one time that a black bear killed somebody and wherever. And of course, like every time that happens is tragic. Yes. Like we're not going to yes. gloss over that. However, I have been doing a lot. Of, I've got a new video that I've been I've been writing and researching and it's about this topic. And I've been uh, finding some very interesting facts and just one of them for the podcast there have been more people that have died from constipation in the last year than have died from black bear attacks <laughs> in the last 100 years. Nice. So, nice. Where, I mean, I, be, I, I love, I love, I, I really want to see your search history for that one, by the dude, way. Like, <laughs> the search history is awful right now. I wouldn't show it to anybody. I mean, my poor FBI agent. What is this guy? Freaking constipation and bear. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's <laughs> super backwards, but but anyway, yeah, it's not that it. I mean, yeah, you're gonna run into wildlife. You're gonna run into things like rattlesnakes. You know, you're gonna and and you know a bear. I mean, I've only had one black bear encounter um, on the AT, and it was very close. Like the bear was probably ten yards away from me. I mean, very close. But I just turned around, and you know, you just follow the certain principles of like don't get in between mom and the cubs, um, and like don't run away like just make yourself big and make a lot of noise and like nine times out of ten or way more than that you're gonna be completely fine um you right. know and people just talk you know even won't, like won't even go in the ocean because of sharks but the most dangerous animal that is out there is by far humans and probably mosquitoes so i mean maybe bring a bug net but mosquitoes are actually yeah, yeah, the most sure. dangerous animal oh, yeah, for by sure. far by far i i don't know i randomly was looking at this yeah. not too long ago so that's the only reason i say that so confidently Mos although i have been known to say things confidently that are probably not true but um yeah mosquitoes but it's it's a good point it's a good point, but I will say I, I we're allowed to push back on each other. By the way, Luke, of course, um, of course, we're allowed to push back, and so I I agree with the premise of what you're saying about how the AT is not that that dangerous, and it's not as dangerous as people might think. The only thing I'll say is that in terms of this being a myth, the, I feel like this is. Mm, I'm kind of thinking this through as I'm talking here. It is definitely true that like people that aren't into through hiking might think that but there's a lot of people out there too i feel like i feel like that so to go back blah, 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 to go back and compare it to the pennsylvania <laughs> rocky myth that's like a myth that a lot of through hikers believe right but like the at is like super dangerous and through hiking is super dangerous i feel like not as many through hikers believe that but um it is still a myth because i guess that there's just in general a lot of people that believe it I'm thinking in terms of the general public and their views of through hiking. If you tell any, if you go to, if you're a through hiker and you go to Thanksgiving and freaking there's some new addition to the family who somehow doesn't already know that you're a through hiker because you tell God and everybody, um, <laughs> and you go up and tell that person, 
hey, I'm a through hiker. And then what are they going to say if they aren't into that, you know, already? They're like, oh my gosh, you don't carry a gun. Oh my gosh, you freaking don't carry pepper spray. You're not afraid of hitchhiking. And like the list just goes on and on and on, you know? Mm -hmm. And so just like to the layman, uh, if you will, to the person who just doesn't through hike and that kind of thing. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Okay. Okay, I think I was just pushing back just for the sake. No, of, no, we need, no. We got we got to have some controversy, and then here, we got to have yeah, yeah, some drama. This that's what this podcast needs. Yeah, um, it is true drama. though. I agree a hundred percent, and it's kind of tough because, dude, I'm sure you, Luke. You know, you know, being part of my channel, um, you've probably seen. Even though you're not involved with the mystery videos, like you've probably seen some of the comments on there. People being like, "Oh my god." hiking is so dangerous and like yes, I've, yes it's i get it i get it honestly if you're not if you don't know anything about hiking and your only exposure to like the at is because you watched a video about a murder that happened the one of the very few murders it's like understandable that you're gonna be like a little bit spooked and be like okay well i guess i'm never gonna fucking set foot on the at like i get right. that and so i'm not trying to just like be a, a jerk to those people but at the same time it is it is frustrating to me and I wish there was a way that I could tell those stories on the channel, but also not discourage people. I'm really trying to find that balance and that's something I need to continue to work on with these videos but, because I think they're important videos to make. I think it's important to tell those stories. Yeah, and so sure. I'm not going to like pretend that those, you know, we, we can't pretend that those scary stories don't exist just for the sake of making, no, not making people scared, you know, but I don't know. That's a whole nother but, discussion. But I guess. here's, but here's the bigger narrative. Like, here's the bigger piece of the puzzle that's, like, part of that whole scenario is that when that's the sort of content that you click on, whether it's a, a news article or something on Facecrack or Instapoop or, <laughs> you know, some YouTube video that Kyle <laughs> dropped, you know, well, now you're showing Mark Zuckerberg and Jeff Bezos and whoever else that, hey – this is the kind of stuff that I want to see. And now that is going to be shown to you more. And then that reinforces that idea. If you're not already in that culture and familiar with that, like just being, just hanging out outside or like taking a risk and like throwing your thumb out and like having an awesome experience with a stranger. Like you don't see those stories, even though they're more prevalent and more like beautiful stories, you know, but you see a lot of the scary things because it's, it's more, it's more marketable, you know, like, you know, if you turn on any news network, you know, it's going to be kind of doom and gloom. And that reinforces that whole, mm -hmm. like, everyone's out to get me. And if I leave the safety of my home and like go spend time outside, then like freaking the boogeyman is coming. And it's like, no, like just, just get out there. When you get out and experience it, it's, it's just, it's so much more therapeutic and healthy, you know, than being afraid of it, you know, because it, yeah. it really is such a good thing to just be Agreed. outside. You don't have to through hike. Agreed. It's tough because I feel like, those scary stories, especially when it comes to hiking, do need to be told because I think there's lessons to be learned. And but, but at the same time, yeah, you don't want to fear monger. So I don't know. It's something I'm continuing to work on. But anyways, let's get back to the to the AT myths. Sure. Um, this, this next myth, I'm going to go ahead. And this myth, I don't know where, dude, I don't know where the hell this one came from. It's so super stupid. And to be fair, you probably don't hear it as much as Pennsylvania is rocky, but this myth is that Virginia is flat. Did you hear anyone say that before you're or, or on the AT, Luke? Because I feel like I did, Dude, and I, I think that's that. such nonsense. I heard that freaking bull crap all the time. I always, <laughs> you just always take things with a grain of salt. Every Everything, like approach everything fresh. Yeah, it's, Virginia's not flat, okay? Like, it is probably true, it has been a while since I hiked the AT, to be fair, but it is probably true that, like, Southern Virginia is maybe a little bit easier than some of the stuff in, like, in like North Carolina and the Smokies and all that. So, like, I understand that, but it's not flat. I mean, objectively, like, as soon as you enter Virginia, almost, you're going within a half mile of the highest point in the entire state, like... Yeah. Where where do you think this Virginia is flat nonsense came from? Do you I have no idea. Dude, like here's here's what happens is like you get one cat who goes, 
oh man, like it was flat yesterday or something in Virginia. <laughs> and then freaking somebody else goes, dude, it was it like text, it's text somebody they met on like day one of trail and they go, and they go, oh yeah, yeah, things are going good up here. It was pretty flat yesterday. And then somebody that's back there starts to go, telling everybody <laughs> else, yo, it's pretty flat up there in Virginia. And then, and then it's mayhem from then, you yeah. know? And, and now you're generalizing the whole trail, even though you're just like, maybe it was one section. It's Virginia is one quarter of the entire AT. It's, I mean, almost, it's like, it's 500 miles, you know, like you can't, you can't say that's so, that's such a long yeah, distance. Yeah, I know, right? You, imagine you, driving you can't even, 500 uh, miles. If you're, I mean, unless you're driving through Texas or Kansas or some bull crap like that, if you drive 500 miles anywhere, you're going to be like, yeah, I saw this. I saw this. I saw that, you know, like. You yeah. see all kinds of different things, you know? Yeah. What a load of absolute freaking nonsense. Croc, croc of doo-doo, man. But anyway. Okay, so this next myth, uh, this one's from Luke once again. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. We're going to have some disagreement on this one. And this was something that was discussed recently about um on, on, an, on a Baker episode. Okay, this next one, Luke says it's a myth that you have to be in shape before you start. And yes. every single person who's listened to recent episodes of Trail Tales knows that I'm going to take issue with this. But since it's his his myth, his point, we're going to start with him. We're going to give him a chance to explain before I dis- absolutely destroy him Ben Shapiro style. Here yeah, we go. facts and knowledge. Facts don't care <laughs> about your feelings. All right, look. I saw many a people out on trail that finished the entire trail that were not in shape. I was not in shape before I started the trail. Um, And there were lots of people that were in a lot worse shape than I was, you know, and they finished. And I saw a lot of people that were in good shape that did not finish because they just, for whatever reason, money, mentally, whatever, couldn't hack it. Um, Fires. Sure. (laughs) Maybe not on the AT. Um, no, but, but, and, and, and so I really believe that, I mean, especially like you could have someone that is, this is probably a crappy parallel, but you remember back in freaking 2017 when what's his face, the Irish dude, the, the MMA guy, freaking McGregor, Conor McGregor fought Floyd Mayweather and got his freaking took his handed to him pretty much. <laughs> um, and it's just because, like, he was – just because he's an incredible athlete, clearly, in whatever – in MMA, he goes to boxing. And it's like – it's just a different sport even though he's a premier athlete to begin with. So if you take a premier athlete that's not really, really, really good at walking between the, between the speeds of two and a half to four miles an hour with, you know, 10 to 30 pounds on their bag, you know, like – you could have someone that's a freaking CrossFit person, you know, who's the crazy CrossFit guy or, you know, a marathon runner or something, you know, like it's just a different sport and it, do- it works your joints differently. It works your legs differently. It works different muscles. It's just, it's just different. And because of that, your body is going to adjust whether you are in bad shape or whether you're in really good shape, you know, like your, our bodies are incredibly adaptable and the, and it will adapt to whatever it is that you're doing. And so it's just yeah. a matter of time. And maybe it takes a little bit longer for someone who's out of shape to be able to start doing like consistent, like 15 ish to 20 ish mile days, you know, but that's perfectly fine because you have a big window and you can take that time to be able to do that. And if you don't, you can do a freaking flip flop or something, you know, if you've got the time and your and the mental capacity it doesn't matter what shape you're in you should do it you know yeah i agree okay so here's the thing i think this myth is bs but i also think it's 100% true um, yeah or or sorry let me let me make that clear i i think what you're saying i think the idea that uh, this is exactly what i said i think the idea that you don't have to get in shape before you start is stupid, but I also do agree that it's a myth that you have to. Does that make sense? Sure. No, yeah, that makes sense. Okay. That's good. Okay, so, and this is what I talked about with Baker. Um, it is true, absolutely, that you don't have to be in super good shape to start a, th- a through hike. And 
maybe one thing that I didn't emphasize emphasize as much in that episode, I did at the end of my dialogue, but one thing I, I should emphasize that Luke just talked about is that you, you shouldn't let that hold you back. Like Absolutely. if you don't have time or the means to train before you through hike, you shouldn't let that be a reason not to through hike. However, Absolutely. Luke, the reason I th- the reason I think this is kind of BS is because I think it's beneficial to train. I think you're doing yourself a major disservice not to train if you can, because you're potentially quitting your job. You're spending a lot of money. You're missing events with your friends and family back home. You're sacrificing a lot. That's the the terminology I used in the last episode when I was talking about this. You're sacrificing so much. And so I just feel like if you're going to make all those sacrifices, you might as well set yourself up for success as best you can and the way that you're going to set yourself up for success is by training. Does that make sense? Which it and and likewise, I completely agree with that. You know, but I just I really it, I hate to see it be a hindrance. You know, like oh, I can't do something like that because I'm out of shape, and I have mm. to get in shape before I have to clean myself up before I get. You know, and it's like no, like. You can just do it now. Just or just start backpacking, whatever, and and see if it's something you're into, and and let that, you know, help you get you in shape. You know, but yeah, I just it breaks my heart when I'm like when I see. I mean, I was talking to my brother the other day, and and he's like, I I could never do something like that because I'd have to get in shape first. And I was like, freaking, get out there and do what you can do. You know what I mean? And if you make it the whole way, what a freaking accomplishment. You know? Yeah. And so yes, like yeah. if you've got the time, but some people like they don't have the motivation to do that but on the on the front end you know like sometimes you just got to kind of jump in with both feet and go and you know instead of like dipping a toe in and being like oh i'm just going to start walking around the neighborhood like yeah sure if like if you can but like if if mentally you just need to jump in just jump in you know yeah i agree with all that too so i feel like yeah i, I don't know I, I think all that's true both yeah i, I mean it it is my brain is spinning. Um, okay, next myth. This one's this one's for me. This one is that I, I I feel like yours are very like philosophical and and you know and mine are very like literal. So <laughs> this myth is that New Hampshire is gonna kill you. Um, you hear sure that will. sometimes. I, it will. I, 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 I so I'll let you talk about your experience with this in a second, Luke. But of course. I'll just say for me. Leading up to the whites on my thru hike, I heard a lot of fear mongering ab- about them. I heard people saying like, "They're super hard. Like you're gonna go through, mul- you're gonna do ten miles a day. That's all you can do there. Like you're gonna go through all these different pairs of shoes." Like people were just making it sound like New Hampshire was a death trap, which is not true. Um, it's in the whites specifically, and so I wanted to put this on the list because it- it's it's a little bit of a stretch. It's maybe not so much a myth and maybe just more fear mongering. But like, it's it's BS. Like, don't let people scare you about New Hampshire. I was especially in tune with this one because I had hiked so much in the White Mountains before my Appalachian Trail through hike, and so I I was hearing all these people talking about New Hampshire, and I was just like, I know that's not true. Like, I've been there. Fucking, you haven't even been there. I've been there, and so it's a myth that New Hampshire is going to kill you. Um, a lot of people say that New Hampshire is actually their favorite part of the entire Appalachian Trail. And so don't let that dissuade you. And I promise you that if you can walk all the way from Georgia to New Hampshire, you can walk through whatever New Hampshire is going to throw your way to. So, yeah. so so don't don't listen to the fear mongering. Did you hear people fear mongering about the whites specifically, Luke? I would hear a lot that people say that the last 10% of the trail is where you kind of got to put in like 90% of the effort. And that maybe is is true to a point. It is different hiking. Like once you get up there to New Hampshire, but now you're maybe you're not doing steep ass freaking 400, 500 foot climbs that are going straight up and down. Now you're doing just more sustained like 2,000, 3,000 foot climbs. And it's just different hiking. But it's all the more rewarding because when you've pressed and gotten to the top of that 3000 foot climb or whatever you have, if you're, you know, typically if you're lucky, you know, and it's not crappy weather, you have great views, you know, you have, and and you've, you're very accomplished instead of just like 
going through the slog of just constantly going up and down and not really getting much reward for it, now you're actually yeah. getting a, a really good reward for this thing. Now, Maine maybe is a little different in some spots. Southern Maine is hairy as hell. But, um, yeah, uh, yeah, for sure. Just, just, again, take it as it comes. Like, take it as a new experience, as a new section, and, and just, it, this is fresh, you know? Don't let other yeah. people's opinions, because that's their subjective experience. You're out there to get your subjective experience. And so, you can maybe take things into account, but really, it's, it's up to the day, you know? Maybe they're having a great day, and you're having a terrible day. Like, it'll, it can be little things like that. Like, maybe someone is, maybe just didn't eat as good the day before, and now they're kind of just not having the best day, you know? And, they're and then little, so they little... start just making shit up. <laughs> no, not making shit up, but it's just like subjectively you are, you're having a really rough day. Like maybe you didn't hydrate super yeah. well. Maybe it's just you're not feeling great. It, just whatever. Um, yeah, just take things as they come. Okay, next myth. This one's from Luke. This myth is that you'll get terrible sleep and you'll have a terrible diet. This is a good one. Um yeah, take it away. I, I, I'm not sure how I feel about this one. I feel like this might be so, some of it might be true. I guess really what I mean is you don't maybe it's not a myth. Maybe for some anyway. It's you don't have to get bad sleep and you don't have to have a bad diet. I ship myself resupply boxes, or at least my sweet, sweet mother did, and we, that we would package before, and we would sit down and we like wholesale or like order stuff, and we'd make you know meals and plan things out and like make our own like mountain house kind of stuff, if you will, or just freeze dry stuff. Um, and so we just had much better control over the nutrients that were in there and that kind of stuff instead of like you just being stuck with, oh, I have to hit up freaking Dollar General or Circle K or Walmart or something like that. Um, and then you just kind of, you, you maybe are on a time crunch or something and now you walk out of there with Pop-Tarts and chips and ramen and summer sausage and all those things are, you know, they're great. I love eating those things too, but I this just gave me better control over the nutrition and the, and the diet. And so it's a good mix of both. You know, sometimes I'd go into town and be like, you know what? I'm freaking craving kettle cooked jalapeno chips. And I know they're not in my next resupply and I'm getting the big mamma jamma bag, you know, and that happens all the time. But, and so, and the same with sleep, like I got some of the best sleep of my life on the AT and the times that I'm same driving. here, dude. Oh, same and, here. I still think back to it all the time, like yes. sleeping in my hammock. Uh, yes. It was the best four and a half months of sleep. Yeah. I've ever gotten in my life. Genuinely. For sure. It's just the best. And I mean, I'm impartial to the ham. I'm partial to the hammock because I just have always preferred that, you know, I tried sleeping in tents when I was first getting into backpacking and then I tried sleeping in hammocks and I just decided then that like, I just sleep better in a hammock and I'm going to do that. And I'm, you know, we'll find ways to make it ultra light and super comfortable, you know? And I love it. And, you know, unless there's just absolutely no trees around and I'm in the desert, you know, then I'm going to be in that dang hammock. Um, and I, yeah, got the best sleep of my life. Um, because, and you're also, you're not doing this, man. You're, you're not going to sleep doing this. You're, you're kind of, I mean, depending on the vibes of the group that you're with and the, you know, I always hung with people and that were like. how much cell service you have. It's true. I mean, true. And, but. I, it just would be so freeing to just lay down and feel like you accomplished a lot during the day and you're fed and you just zonk out in that hammock, dude. You just get rocked to sleep and, you know, and you're out for a good nine hours and it's oh, nothing like it. But yeah. yeah, you don't have to get bad sleep and you don't have to get have a bad diet when you're through hiking, I guess, on the AT. So I was a little bit unsure about this one, like I said. But I think th I agree. I agree that this is a myth, especially the sleep. I think that's definitely a myth. Um, I don't know if it's, mm, I don't know. You, you, I guess you you do hear people say it, especially maybe not even in terms of through hiking, but just in backpacking in general. People talk about how you don't get good sleep, which it is true that a lot of time backpacking you don't get good sleep. But so I, I, I yeah, I guess I guess you hear pe hear people say this, but um, I definitely agree. The sleep is a myth. The food. I agree. Overall, it probably is a myth um, that you have to have like a bad diet and you have to eat junk food. 
I will say though, it's significantly harder to eat healthy. Significantly harder you than mean it is to, to eat. You mean compared to normal life? Like it's just easy. It's just compared to eating junk food on your through hike. It, it's significantly harder to eat healthy on trail than it is to eat unhealthy it takes more work on the front end yes to be plan those things and you kind of got to have a homie or a family member that's like cool with sending you those packages you know and you leaving them in boxes in their house for a few months and then yeah. sending one once a week or whatever logistically it's harder it's also harder too it's because it's harder to get enough calories which er, I, I I shouldn't say it. I don't know that for sure. I'm sure there's people out there that have figured it out, but it, it takes more work certainly. Um, and so, but 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 in terms of the raw myth, it's it's you know you're gonna have a terrible diet. You have to have a terrible diet. I guess that is false. So your your point your point stands. Fair enough. Hit yeah. us with another one, big boy. Okay, the next one from my list is that this one is Luke, you might not have as much to add for this one because this one was very specific to my hike, but I, of course we still want your thoughts. Um, especially if you're going to agree with what I say. No. Um, I do like to get paid. (laughs) This myth is that you cannot hike the Appalachian trail. If you start in May, This is another thing that was talked about uh, on a recent episode with Baker, but I just, I wanted to throw it in. I should probably revise it a little bit. I think maybe that was too specific. I think the myth is more that like you have to start in like March or April in order to through hike. Like that's the time. Like it's, it's going to be too hard if you start early. It's going to be too hard if you start late. Um, I think this is total BS. I'm proof that it's total BS. As many of the, the Trail Tales listeners know, I started the Appalachian Trail on May 14th and I finished the whole thing. Um, I, I did have to be disciplined in my mileage. I kept track of my mileage for most of it, my average, to make sure that I was on pace. I had to be very disciplined when it came to my zeros and my town time, which is kind of a bummer sometimes, to be honest. But I did it. It's possible. There's people out there that hike it even faster than I do, than I did. Um, there's people out there that start like January 3rd, which that might be a little early. Um, but my point is that you don't just have to start like in the traditional northbound times. And if you have a less traditional start date that just works for your your life plans, or even if you're trying to get away from the bubble or some of the crowds and you want to start yeah, in a less traditional date... Um, you can, and you can still be successful on the AT. It don't, it's a myth that you have to start in those specific time periods. So yeah. What do you, uh, what do you think about that, Luke? What was your start date again? March 14th. So two months before. So a pretty typical start date, but I'm sure you ran into people. A little Yeah. A little bit early. That's, that's fair. Yeah. A little bit early, but, um, probably more typical than May, mid May. Um, but I'm sure that you ran into Lots of other hikers that started at different time periods, um, especially because you're a terrible hiker and you're really slow. So I'm sure you got passed by a lot of people that started in like July or August, maybe. No, I'm just kidding. Um, oh, but <laughs> here's my I am a fast hiker when I'm hiking, but I'm I, joking. I'm joking. Uh, no, 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 no. I'm not saying that defensively. I'm saying it just to like make a point because it, the point it, it leads into it just depends on what kind of a hiker you are. If I had to hike the AT the way you did, uh, to be honest with you, I would have been miserable because I don't like that feeling of like, I have to munch these miles. I have to get up at this certain time. I can't take a spontaneous zero and go like tubing down with these nasty hiker trash. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm just super sociable and I don't like like being by myself. And so if I was hiking at us with kind of a wicked fast pace, then I wouldn't be able to like stick around with people and form those like relationships. And that's not to say that you can't, when you hike fast, because you obviously have Flossie and all, you know, all kinds of people that you met on different, on Mm -hmm. your BCT and AT hikes. But, um, I just like, I don't like that pressure. I, I took my time. I finished in September 19th. So I took like six, over six months, just over six months to do the whole thing. 
And I feel like if, if, if you've got the time, take the time. But if you are the kind of person that's like, you know what, this is kind of my only shot in the foreseeable future, and I've got four and a half months or whatever it is, and I'm going to freaking send it, and you're cool with that, then by all means, like, do it. It just depends on your vibes, like, what, what kind of hiker you are, what, what direction you like to go. But, yeah, do what you have to. And if you don't have to do what you have to, do what you want to. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, next myth from Luke. It sounds, which, I've been wanting to say this every time. It sounds like it's Christmas morning and you're like passing around packages every time you do that. You're like, you're like, on this next one is from me. And it is. Welcome anyway. to every episode that Baker and I have ever done. <laughs> we like to do these lists. They're fun though. They're fun. They make a content. Anyways, yeah, sure, um, sure, sure. This is content. Busting more li- <laughs> myths. Yeah. Busting more Nuts. I mean, uh, myths. Um, okay. Hello. <laughs> Sorry, mom. Um, this one from Luke is that you need the latest and greatest and bestest gear in order to through hike. I think this is a great one. Why don't you talk about that? I feel like a lot of my points are like general through hiking things, not necessarily like AT specific, but, but I do think that you I did the entire AT with a Walmart backpack and I I recently put up a video about that and I really liked making that video actually. Um, and I just wanted to see like, can this thing make it the whole way? Like, can this make it the distance? Because I mean, yes, I had a lot of like nice gear. I, I bought that backpack for my very first backpacking trip at Walmart and above, you know, a bunch of other stuff. But then over the years before I went on the AT, you know, I got a DCF Rainfly. I got a lighter. I replaced my Walmart hammock with a, you know, ultralight one and um, different stuff like that. You know, a nice quilt and lighting equipment quilt, those kind of things. But but the, the freaking Walmart pack was Ozark Trail, 45 liters, you know, a little framed, internal framed pack. And I was the only guy out there sporting anything from Walmart <laughs> other than someone, you know, Sawyer's you can get at Walmart. But other than that, like... That, Sawyer's. You know, I love how Southern people say Sawyer, dude. My girlfriend saw- says it like that, too. She says, Sawyer. It's Sawyer. awesome. Sawyer. Or, it's awesome, dude. I remember there was a guy on the PCT from Oklahoma, too, I think he was. And he would say it like that, Sawyer. Anyways, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I had to say it. No, you're good. Um... And so it's like everybody's out here with these like, you know, fancy-ish or maybe not so fancy, but like not Walmart backpacks. Um, And I was like, you know what? Let's freaking see if this can make it. And it did. I mean, it did have some failures. Uh, It had like this this shoulder strap webbing snapped one day, but I got one of those little Z-Pack sewing kits with the hook needle. Freaking had my, I made my friend freaking zip that sucker right up. It was pissing rain in Pennsylvania. (laughs) We were underneath a bridge somewhere. Um, And it made it. And my like Katahdin summit photo is like me holding these like Air Force shorts, PT shorts that made it the whole way that became a kilt. And, you know, those are just like random shorts I had. They, you know, made it the full 2,200 miles. And then, you know, that Walmart backpack at Katahdin. But you don't need fancy stuff. Sure, it helps. Like maybe just pick the big ticket items over, you know, a course of time. You know, you don't have to like you don't it doesn't have to be a hindrance to getting on trail. Just going back to that point where it's like, oh, my gosh, I don't have the latest and the greatest. I don't have like the best Z-Pax tent and this and that. It's like freaking take what you've got. And go out there and, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, it is what it is. I think that's a really good one to to bring up because it's easy to get wrapped up in all the fancy gear and to get intimidated and, and discouraged from through hiking because your gear may might not be as good as someone else's gear. And so... Um, I sound like such a generic freaking influencer, dude, when I say shit like that, don't I? I'm like, just, just, just be yourself and use your own gear. And don't, yeah. don't get discouraged. Um, I'm sorry. I hate myself, but it is a good point. It is a true point. Okay. It's true. I stand by it. And, uh, I think it's, it's good that Luke, that Luke brought that up. Um, dude, we're getting towards the end of the episode here and, I don't know, Luke, you've been on the show before. Do you remember what we do at the end of these Trail Tales episodes? Heck no, I don't remember. This, this, I'm paying this guy. Well, not right now. You know what? You deleted, I, I would have rewatched the episode <laughs> if it got posted. 
and then well, I would remember it. One of them's up. One of them's up. Oh he, yeah, sure he, is. He do, he doesn't love me. It's okay. Um, <laughs> no, at the end of these episodes, we tell a story, and I think oh, that because right. I deleted. <laughs> Which sounds so stupid because I deleted our last episode and nobody got to hear it. So nobody got to hear the story at the end. And so maybe we should retell that story at the end of this episode. Now, there is one problem with that, Luke. Do you know story? what the problem is? I don't remember the story. That's a problem. Yeah, I don't either. And oh, so we'll, <laughs> we'll be it. right back after this quick <laughs> editing pause. Ready? Okay. Wait, that was a terrible snap. Okay, we're back. Um... Turns out we actually couldn't remember the story, but 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 we 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 thought of another one, and uh, this is going to be one that you're going to want to hear on YouTube and and watch on YouTube, I guess. So this is a little um a little incentive for everyone to subscribe to the Trail Tales YouTube channel now that we're starting to do some video podcasts as well as audio because there's 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 going to be some visual aids in this one, um, so. This is on the Washita Trail. Luke and I were we're kicking it, and um, we're getting towards the end. We're probably about two thirds of the way in, and you know we're looking. We're we're at that point in the hike where, you know, you've been out there for a while, and so you're starting to feel it. You know, the little bit of wear and tear physically and mentally, but you still have a decent ways to go. It's not like you're at the finish line where you can just kind of drag yourself through, right? You still gotta. You still got to have a reason to be out there and, and keep yourself entertained. And so right. what 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 did we discover using our cameras that we could do to keep ourselves entertained? That sounded terrible, by the way. Well, um, let's just <laughs> let's just acknowledge that. Um, yeah. the, <laughs> it's uh, not what you're thinking. Well, That's not the, the kind of visual aid that we're going to have here. <laughs> here's the what funny. did I mean? Luke? Here's the Kyle. You would think that. Kyle and I are freaking camera whizzes. And let me tell you something. We are not camera whizzes. No. And um and so we were playing around with like it's nighttime, right? We're on the, this is like the only night of the whole trail that we're camped on top of this like lookout. So we like and like the stars were out. It was gorgeous. Our hammocks were like set up like on this bald. We're like they're on some trees. It was awesome. And so we're playing with the settings on our camera and we're playing with this like bulb function, which just means like however long you hold the shutter is how long the shutter stays open. And then you can control and that's how you get all these kind of cool like wavy light effects. And so it started out very humbly and innocently by taking pictures of the stars. It was really nice. We just put them on the ground and we're taking pictures. Yeah, because because when it it works great for um, taking pictures of the stars, by the way, because when you hold the shutter open and it's just staying open, it's taking all that light in, and so it's making the stars brighter. And it's also picking up stars that the human eye can't even see because it's taking in so much right. light. But um, yeah. Turns out there's more that you can do with it, as Luke is going to explain. Uh, absolutely. So, I mean, we got these headlamps too, right? And they also produce light, you know, much like a star does. So after making that caveman ooga booga discovery, and our headlamps <laughs> also have two different light modes. So we've got white and we've got red. So, I mean... We started drawing some pictures. We're like, what can we do with this? Maybe a face, maybe some squiggly lines. Well, that's crazy. And then, of course, the like adolescence slips in, just like. And speaking of cavemen, okay, the cavemen were drawing dicks on the cave walls <laughs> back, way back. This is not a it's new true. thing. We're just we're. This is 21st century art. Okay, so now we're of course we just get to draw dicks with our with our headlamps, <laughs> and you know, and and we got decorative and you know took some artistic liberties and yeah, you can see that you know that's a little little ch -ch -ch -ch. yeah. Little, and so know, as you're seeing effect. on the screen right now, this is what ended up happening. <laughs> um, because because when the shutter is just being held open, you can draw with your light. You can move it around, and it just creates like a streak in the image. And so that was how we kept ourselves entertained. That's right. Two grown men just hiking on the trail together and just killing time one night. That's how just we did it. Giggling like schoolgirls in the middle of the woods, man. And it was, and we're still talking about it almost a year later. That's right. <laughs> uh, yeah, you texted Which me is, that like yesterday. It's been a, it's been a year. I know it's been almost flies. a year. I think it was actually today, like one year ago today, that we started the trail. Yeah, yeah. Mid October. And here we are, finally getting the truth out. 
about what we use our cameras for when we're hiking, besides making dank content that you should all subscribe to. All right, so that's going to do it. Uh, Luke, thank you for coming on here. Thank you for being the guinea pig with this whole video thing and uh, putting up with some te technical difficulties and just for for having a sweet mustache and for just being you. Thank you very much. Yeah, dude. It was a great time. Thank Where you. can people go find your stuff? Your YouTube, your Instagram, your um, OnlyFans, all that. You find me on my Insta poop is Luke underscore McKay 98. Um, and then I've got the YouTube's experience over things. Um, go over there. Uh, watch, watch that, uh, watch that Walmart backpack video. It's pretty funny, I think. Although, yeah. probably not. So, just let me know. Drop a comment. Go see me there. Appreciate you guys. Thanks for listening. Hell yeah. Fun. Thank you for watching and listening, everybody. Yeah. One more time. Go subscribe to the Trail Tales YouTube channel. We're going to be doing more of these video ones. Ideally, every episode is going to be video very soon. And so go subscribe and uh, give me some feedback. Let me know what you think. And um, thank you all so much for supporting the show, for listening, for watching. Peace.